So uh, let's have a look at a couple of ways that we can apply seasonality to our forecast or, or at least calculate what they are. So just jumping back into Excel. So the data that I've got set up like this, you can see I've actually uh, set it up in quarters. Now, the reason that it's set up like that is so that we can work, look at each quarter uh, individually. So what we want to do here is look at the average of each quarter individually. So you can see by doing it like that, that quarter one is quite low, quarter two is higher, quarter three is the highest, and it goes back down again in quarter four. So it gives you a bit of an idea of what the seasonality is going to look like. So I could use an average formula like that, F4, and that tells me that the average of everything is 725. So I can use that number here. So I can take that 587 and divide it by the average of the entire data set and work out my seasonality there. So what that's saying is that the seasonality or the seasonality index of quarter one is 0.81. So one being average or 100%, 0.81 means that it's lower than average. So I can copy that across like that. And so that is the seasonality index for every quarter. So what I'm going to do now is use that seasonality index in my forecast, but I need to kind of set my data up a little bit better than the way I've got it. So my start date there is 31st of March and I need to just kind of recut it. So I'm going to start with the 31st of March and I'm going to put my data into a um, into one column because I need to do that in order to calculate the linear forecast. So I could use an E date or there's a couple of different functions I could use here. I'm going to go with an E of month. So that's my start date there. And I'm going to say three months from that date and copy that down. So my data goes to the end of 2022 and then I want to go out for another four periods after that. Okay, so that's as far as I want to go. So what I need to do now is to take this data here and just flick it around. So you could just copy and, um, you know, you could do your paste special and transpose. But of course, it would be nice to leave it linked. Um, we could just use an array like that. Now I'm using Excel 365, so you can see it's actually picked it up as a dynamic array. If you are not using 365, it will not work like that. What you'll need to do is highlight the whole lot and then go Control Shift Enter, and that will create the dynamic formula for you. You can see that it's actually put those curly brackets around it. Um, I'm going to leave mine as is because I'm using Excel 365. So I just need to do another transpose for the second year like that. There's no kind of quick and easy way to do this, unfortunately. So then I use my third transpose across like that. There we go. All right. So that's my data recut into one column. And then what I can do is just like we did last time is use my forecast.linear to forecast it out. Actually, before I do that, I'll just go in and create my chart. There we go. That's a good start. Okay. Change my colors. We'll go back to that one. All right. Okay. So then I'll go, go back and do my forecast.linear formula. So X again is the point on the X axis that I want to forecast for. The known Y's is the historical data F4 and the known X's are the corresponding dates F4. There we go. And I should be able to copy it down. Aha. And you can see there, I'll just link that up at the top. You can see it's a, another, uh, it's gone straight along the trend line or the line of best fit. Just going and change my title here. Seasonalized forecast, we'll call it. Okay. So now what I want to do is actually grab my seasonality index. I'm going to do another transpose and there we go. Just flick it down like that. I don't want that showing up on my graph. I don't need that there. Get rid of it. Okay. And then I can just take that number and multiply it out. There we go. And so that is going to give us a nice little forecast. So it's taking the forecast that we did and then applying the seasonality to it.